Hello, is this Vinny on the land? This is Jack Thompson. I live off Mucklebury Road. And I've got these damn kids and their dogs leaving excrement everywhere. My life is a spiraling abyss of midlife failure from which there is no escape. I was hoping you would suggest to me some movies. I want, I want movies I want to watch. I want to watch movies where reality is a nightmare. Show me people, people that got it worse than myself because human suffering gets me there. I, I, I gotta get a going now. The, I gotta get the mail. Those damn kids are shitting on my lawn again. Please find me my movies. <laughs> Welcome back to Video Rama, where we take your request for a topic and give you our recommendations. We received a message from a man who has the local youth defecating on his lawn, and he requires a film to illustrate to him how real life is truly a nightmare. And this he will find out, for he will be Video Rama's first victim. I am Brian Oblivion, or Adrian. And I'm Donnie, and I believe it's better to uh, burn out than fade away. <laughs> I'm Linda. I am the cheese word made flesh. You're also the Ayatollah of rock and roll? Well, on the weekends. Yeah, because we here at Videorama never mentally left the early 80s. No, it's true. I, I'm still the night writer. <laughs> <laughs> Are you wrapped up like a douche? <laughs> Another Donnie in the night. Manfred Mann and the boss are both force ghosts behind you, just shaking their heads, being like, oh, fuck with this one. Oh, shit. <laughs> My dog just farted, and it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Why is really the really dog bad. over there in the video store in your lifetime original VHS section, Linda? Yeah. It's you the homeless dog I picked have up. been warned. <laughs> oh, God. oh, is that Warty and Scabby, the homeless dog, the pooch <laughs> that'll melt your heart and your seat covers with its farts? <laughs> it's Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad, you guys. Well, you've got yeah. nobody to blame but yourself. I yeah. know. I shouldn't have fed him all those beans. Oh. Oh, God damn it. Oh. You're a human beans. Uh. Speaking of. Uh, speaking of, hey, kids, uh, real life's a nightmare. So we went back to 1983 when real life was a nightmare. We're not going to say why, because we don't get political on video drama. Am I right? Am I right? Mm. Yeah. Uh, you uh, little scamp. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, truth be told, I didn't get to do my first choice on this because certain movies aren't allowed streaming uh, because of certain Nazis who control streaming services. Just saying. Uh, so uh, we're in 1983. Talking to you, Steve Jobs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck not you, dead. Steve Jobs. <laughs> we know, man. No, you think we don't know, but we know. Time to beat him up. <laughs> Let's start a new conspiracy. He's eating fistfuls of carrots and having heart attacks. Good job, Steve Jobs. <laughs> oh, I control the internet. Uh, <laughs> From the grave. The grave. Yeah, so uh, uh, we, 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 the movie we did uh, this week was uh, David Cronenberg's uh, Videodrome. Right there. Which, if you haven't heard of it, we're all very disappointed uh, in you. Um, it's true, yeah. Yeah, it's so, probably the most appropriate movie to what our podcast is. I mean, it has video right in the title. <laughs> Do you want to uh, give a summary for those who have not seen it? 
So in 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 Videodrome, uh, uh, James Woods plays Max Wren, an unscrupulous uh, owner uh, of a uh, of an independent uh, television network that uh, broadcasts things like violence and pornography. Ding. And and ding. <laughs> and, and and they have they have him uh, on on uh, on a, on a panel show with a guy who is on television on television, Doctor Brian Oblivion, and that's and the only way he will appear on television. On television, that's right. After all, there is nothing real outside our perception, is there? You can see that, can't you? Uh, and the show is run by none other than Deborah Harry of Blondie. One way or another, she's going to find you. She's going to get you, get you, get you. One and way. then she's going to have a disappointing solo career. Uh-huh. And I was just saying. <laughs> Record covers are cool. Music videos are cool. Songs, not so much. Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, um, James Woods, uh, has, as, as one of his video geek buddies uh, from, from the station there, uh, uh, tracking down really weird uh, outlaw content to put on his channel. And he finds a signal that may be coming out of Malaysia or may be coming out of Pittsburgh. And it's a show called Videodrome, which is just torture and murder. What a reality show. Yeah, yeah, it's a reality <laughs> show. Yeah, yeah. When you get voted off the island on Videodrome, they take you to the room that's painted all red and uh, tie you up to a wall of electrified clay and whip you while you're naked. Kind of like work. It's, it's exactly like my job, I have to say. Um. <laughs> Here in the back, in the back um, room. So James Woods uh, has 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 this older uh, Greek lady friend who wants to take a shower with him. Uh, uh, no, track she down doesn't. Where video drum came from, and um, and because uh, she wants to sell him her 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 soft core uh, uh, soft porno uh, Apollo and Dionysus. He's too uh, old for her. <laughs> he's too old for her, though. Yeah, and this is this is by the way, this is young James. <laughs> Um, and, and she winds up pointing him to back to Brian Oblivion, whose daughter runs the cathode ray mission where hobos are taken in and shown and shown television to put them back in line with society's mixing board. Yeah. And, and <laughs> she gives him a, a, a handy dandy a video drum uh, cassette of, of, of her father and Max Wren begins to hallucinate. Meanwhile, he's starting up a relationship with uh, Debbie Harry there, and uh, and she's a little bit kinky, like she likes putting cigarettes out on herself. Yeah, and uh, that's uh, when when he gradually she likes him to out. pierce her ears. Yeah, yeah, and pierce your ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of the hottest things. She's like, hey, maybe you could cut me a little. I don't know. Like, oh, it looks <laughs> like somebody beat me to it. You let somebody cut you. <laughs> Then that explains like why everybody at Claire's was like so like creepy. They'd be like, oh, <laughs> when they're getting their ears oh, pierced, yeah. or the You're piercing would go to the mall. Oh, stop yeah. waxing my pants with your vagina, Jesus! <laughs> oh. <laughs> and that's what James Woods does now. <laughs> He's, he works at the piercing pagoda. <laughs> Would you fucking hold still, little girl? What are you, fourteen or something? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, when I was piercing your oh, eighteen, yeah. did you get a little wood? Huh? You would get a little mahogany? Yeah. <laughs> He's fresh. Uh, well, I'm um, who I am. I used to be in TV. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Love him or hate him, uh, he's enjoyable to watch. He's, yeah, no, he, uh, we're talking movies. we're talking about James Woods on on screen. James Woods, the actor, mm-hmm. is fine. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, no. So so we we get uh, Videodrome. It's a David Cronenberg movie. So from there, it, it of course spirals into fucked up body horror, and and Cronenberg may well have invented body horror. There's some debate there, mm-hmm. but but he, he's he's doing a really distinctive example of it here, and it's not just some goofy body melt movie from Australia or some shit. This is the real fucking deal. He's just sitting there watching, watching, watching some video drum, you know, scratching, scratching his stomach. He seems to be getting a little bit of a rash, you know, and uh, he's just got his gun out. He's effing with his gun. And uh, and uh, he, As you uh, do. Th- that's when he discovers he's getting a hole in his stomach. He's and getting he a big itching oh his uh, stomach vagina. Yeah, he's with got his a gun. big, you know, or, you know, he's Frylock. It's his VCR. It's just on the front, you know, Um <laughs> 
but the, yeah, no, he just kind of, it just kind of pokes the gun in there and then the gun gets stuck in there and then it closes back up and he's like, the fuck? And but then his assistant later. <laughs> yeah. His assistant I mean... from the station comes by and she's all like, oh, well, what's this <laughs> tape? Video drum, huh? I was like, wait, don't touch it. <laughs> Backs. <Yeah. laughs> You, you, I'm sorry I hit you. You didn't hit me. <laughs> Are you I sure? I smacked the shit out of you really no. good. She turned oh, into okay. Debra, right. Debra Harry. Yeah, she Debbie did. Yeah, no, he, he, yeah, he's hardcore hallucinating by now. And he takes the tape back to, to the daughter of Brian Oblivion. And he's like, so it, it bites. She's like, what kind of teeth does it have? He's like, by the way, it, 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 that uh, those tapes send out a signal that give you brain tumors. He's like, you let me fucking watch it? That gives <laughs> yes. you brain tumors? What's wrong with you? Are you some kind of bitch? <laughs> And she's like, well, you know, people were trying to kill me. So, so Brian Oblivion, her dead dad, uh, got the, got the brain tumor cancer from the Videodrome. And, uh, and these other people who he was developing it with, they wanted to use it as some kind of weapon. And, and, uh, so they, they destroyed him and now they're, they're going to unleash it and use Max Ren's TV station to do it. And so, uh, 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 James Woods is basically ensnared in the whole thing. And he's like killing for one side and then for the other. And like, 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 like he gets, he gets, you know, a, a gun melted into his hand. You know, you get, you get, you get, t you get, uh, soft television screams, you get erectile TVs and VCRs, uh, you get videotapes made out of flesh. You get a hand grenade where a guy's hand is ripped off and a bloody <laughs> grenade is put in its place. Okay, in that scene, I I like because he See, puts Pittsburgh. his hand. He tries to put a a video. Yeah, he cassette. tries to put the flesh tape into James Woods. Yeah, he's oh trying to God. control him yeah. through these videos. So he uh, yeah. video cassettes. So he tries to put it in his stomach, and then his stomach kind of closes in on his fist. And I was thinking, vagina dentata. Pretty much, yeah. This was a lesson about <laughs> consent. <Yeah. laughs> You know, Linda, you made me watch that movie, and it's just like that—that that just pales compared to a movie like Videodrome. Like, you know. I was talking to Jane about it in our last episode, and I was saying that my appreciation for that movie is like ninety percent, well, eighty percent of uh, just the fact that it introduced me to the uh, sound effect and captions of Squelch. Squelch. <laughs> yes. Oh, he should have it. been a Gregor Rocky movie. That would have been so much better. <laughs> Gregor Rocky's a real go-to guy for like your your fucked up, intentionally offensive sex movie. Um, <laughs> but sorry. So, uh, uh, Videodrome, you know, uh, uh, fucking classic, fucking classic. Mm -hmm. um, uh, wonderful, wonderful movie. It's 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 not only very indicative of that early eighties time and place, you know, of like outlaw TV stations, you know, and like the VCR becoming a thing and basically everybody becoming a video pirate and it being really easy. Um, and that just, satellite they had, it, it was like the one that Donnie and I grew up with in the backyard. You, you kids in your privilege, I swear, you know, no, although, no. uh, between 87 awesome. and 89, we lived at, uh, at a, um, at like, it was basically an apartment complex, but ours was a condo for some reason. So I guess we just had to pay more, but, uh, the, the whole neighborhood had one big satellite dish. So basically everybody had cable just from living there, like this crystal clear satellite signal. So we got to see all kinds of great shit oh. taped off the of TV back in the eighties. Um, Donnie but yeah, and I no. would just watch Korean dramas and uh, make up the words. <laughs> I think yeah. that our fun favorite sure. storyline had um, mm. a man that was was blind but didn't know it, and everybody oh, yeah. was trying to tell him, like, "Grandpa, you're you're blind." Like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I you? just can't Ooh. see well. <laughs> yeah. You know what? My problem with that drama was is that it just wasn't tacky enough. <laughs> wasn't tacky enough to get me off no. yes <laughs> something soft about it yeah it's just so soft about it yeah. that's right patron north america it has a certain soft. ethnic quality to it yeah. <laughs> um so uh for those who don't know uh david cronenberg uh started off being known as canada's baron of blood uh, he made movies like uh, uh shivers aka the parasite murders or they came from within and uh, he made Rabid with Marilyn Chambers, uh, yeah. where where a mad scientist uh, gives gives her this appendage that comes out of her armpit and like bites people and turns them into like vampire zombies. Um, and he did the Brood with uh, with Oliver Reed, 
where, where this where this weird therapy thing results in body mutation this woman is able to like give birth to these beings that like are like these 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 pygmies that do murder for her i'm kind of out uh, on an oliver reed kick lately oliver reed's pretty fucking great um i just watched and, was it uh the burnt offerings Oh yeah, that thing's fucking awesome. That, that's so awesome. fucking amazing. Yeah, that's, that's one of the more respectable Karen Black entries right there. Oh. And Betty Davis is great in yeah. that. Oh my um, god, so great movie. Good. But um, but uh, Cronenberg, this right here for those for those who follow the Cronenberg career, uh, Videodrome falls right between Scanners, which was his big breakout hit and made people notice him, you know, outside of Canada, and uh, and uh, fucking um, um, the Dead Zone. Before you know, like he started, uh, you know, doing doing. Uh, he was you, you could never call David Cronenberg mainstream, but like he did stuff that was higher profile. You mean the one with Anthony Michael Hall? <laughs> fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> That's right, Christopher Walken and Anthony Michael Hall, they're like finishing each other's sentences. They, Sandwiches. Like, it, they both come to a party and like people are like, I don't know which one of you. Are you the Anthony and Michael Hall, are you the Christopher Walken? I just can't tell right now. <laughs> Oi. Oi, 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 yeah. So what made you uh, choose this one? Uh, well, this, this is one of the basically, well, for one thing, I just really fucking wanted to do it. And, and this is, this is, this sure. is exemplary of the category. So. So basically, there's a whole class of kind of of kind of Kafka-esque film, you know, if you want to say, if we want to get real pretentious, and I do. Um, uh, this so so think think movies like uh, like like Jacob's Ladder. Um, uh, oddly enough, Bonnie Curtis Hall's Gridlocked with uh, Tim Roth and Tupac Shakur. Uh, Orson Welles is The Trial. Um, basically, uh, there 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 will be times in life, and more importantly, in cinema. Um, where you come to realize a thing is all around you that you never noticed before. And, and, uh, and real life gets strange and somehow worse. <laughs> um, and, it's called and, growing up. But, uh, <laughs> actually, uh, the reason, the, the, the biggest reason I included Videodrome is that, is that, you know, like uh, the first time I saw it, I had the impression that the first times I saw it, I had the impression that most people has like, wow, that's fucked up. Should be weird. And then, and then you look at the parts of the film that that display the non hallucinations, you know, where where James Woods is just going around around Toronto trying to learn more shit, you know, and like go to the to the Cathode Ray mission, like like hiding from the police on a street corner. And you realize that the entire real world in that movie is indeed a shithole. Mm-hmm. Like like everything everything is squalor and poverty and filth. It is a world that is so bad that people turn to television just to survive. Well, that's the other thing too. The one of the bigger messages in the film is just how media became something in the future that he saw just all-consuming. Like yeah. even the opening of the film showing the ad for the TV that you take to bed with you. Yeah, mm-hmm. and just his own personalized wake-up calls too. It's just. Kind of foretelling our future. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I know. Um, there have been a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of people saying that it's um, really just uh, like a commentary on media. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, Brian Oblivion was based on um, his, Cronenberg's uh, uh, professor, yeah. <clears throat> who taught him about film who um was also known to uh say the uh media is the message yeah he wait did he study all it? his films he's kind of had Cronenberg study under Marshall film. McLuhan he did yep. only <laughs> Marshall McLuhan you don't know anything about Marshall McLuhan I happen to have Marshall McLuhan <laughs> right here <laughs> Hello, I'm back from the grave. <laughs> I don't know why I talk like this. <laughs> Just get a picture of Marshall McLuhan as Vincent Price now. But yeah, yeah. Um, he he studied under uh, McLuhan and uh, and that makes so, much so sense. yeah, and Oblivion was supposed to be based on on him. Yeah, and um, he's another uh, I guess prominent Canadian Canuck in the um, film industry. But um, but also, 
you know, there's been a connection of like him sort of foreseeing the internet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and, and the film was also made, I mean, really at the point when VHS was becoming more readily available to the mm-hmm. lower class and everyone else. Yeah, so regu- a regular person could get a VCR. Right? Yeah. Well, it wasn't even, like in the um, 70s where you'd have to pay like 2000 1970s dollars for to get one. Yeah. Well, and besides that sort of um, homeless mission uh, with all the TVs, there was also um, like a homeless man with a TV. Yeah. And, you know, he's got it running on battery. So everybody has a TV. They're all like uh, plugged in. And uh, it, it was supposed to be about uh, supposedly a commentary on the effects of media and society and culture. Yeah. And um, back in the college, I took a um, sci- science fiction and horror films oh. and uh, society class. I was kind of upset because she, the, the professor had us watch Existence. Well, existence is still good. It's yeah. good, but it's it's not Videodrome. I feel like if you're gonna go with Cronenberg, like, like I think it I might think wake it, people up a little too much because there are a lot of people that let themselves be very influenced by the media they're consuming. Yeah, it's true. Uh, it, well, the, a lot of people are pretty much only consumers. <laughs> well, <laughs> they just and sit I think, there and suckle at that tea. <clears> it's like, yeah, what's the next show? What's the next? <sighs> well, I think that. Uh, the message of the the movie was just kind of summarized in Professor Oblivion's um, oh, yeah. thing. What he, what he was saying, well, his little monologue on speaking the. Speaking of college, though, like show. like I, what, the pop culture class that I was in freshman year at Evergreen, I would frequently rip whip out Brian Oblivion quotes. Um, <laughs> you just let me whip. And I'd be out. doing it in my Brian Oblivion <laughs> voice and shit, but 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 it would it would, like it would throw people off. They're, they're like, "Wow, that guy's really smart." It's like, not really. I just seen a lot of movies. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when I when I wrote that play, <laughs> they well the the story that they decided to turn into a play, and everyone's like, "Linda, this is very good. This is very important, and this is really impactful." I'm like, I'm like. I got drunk and um, thought Watch about the Twilight, Twilight Zone, Zone movie. Yeah, yeah you did. <laughs> <laughs> you really did. Thank you. <laughs> That's something that commonly runs in our family because I was one of the few like top six that got an A in our general studies class because our we didn't have a course for the day. So the teacher said, that she was going to let us go early so we could wander around Seattle. And then you had to write a report about where you went. You had to visit at least one familiar shop and one new shop. And she wanted us to be as descriptive as we could. And Speaking for like two pages, shop. I just went on about how at the time I was wandering Seattle, the fresh scent of days old urine was still wafting in the air, fresh from the wetness on the ground from the last time it rained. And my ex at the time was like, this is, you're just being an asshole. It's like, you're going to get failed on this. And I got an A because the teacher's like, you were being very descriptive. It's very honest. And it made me feel like I was with you the whole way. And See? I'm I like, smell urine yeah. too. that was the assignment. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's just it. As long as you follow the fucking guidelines, you could be watching movies while taking a shit on the toilet and oh. suddenly scribble something down on your toilet paper and eat it. And then later out, regurgitate it on your typewriter and go, <laughs> I am a master. <laughs> That's how Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer was made. And your yeah. ex is an idiot. Yeah. And the, uh, it makes me think of, in, in, in the movie, at one point, uh, he's got this guy whose job it is to, I guess, kind of pirate uh, yeah, these pirate. Yeah, airwaves. And... <laughs> He, he has like a big sign that says oh like, peter dvorsky yeah yeah he has a big sign that says something like um videos down here or something like that and, and it's james, supposed to be a clandestine operation yes yeah james what says it's supposed to be a clandestine uh, investigation and so he tells him to get rid of it so what does he do he just starts biting into it and eating yeah 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 it. he bites a piece off of it yeah like now that's a way to do it 
<laughs> I yeah, fucking love so those funny. scenes too. He's got all that old timey like radio mm. equipment and shit in that in that room. Like it's fuck. Every frame is fucking gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Everything's cluttered in this movie. It's like an Orson Welles or a, or an Arthur Penn movie. But like everything is is a fucking mess. Like there's no order at all, except actually inside Videodrome. Um, <laughs> like his uh, Max true. Rand has this apartment, and it's and it's like it is one of the swank eighty eighty early eighties apartments. It's got the fucking glass block and the faux deco yeah. shit in it. Like it, you know, you could tell it's expensive. Clutter everywhere. Piles of books, piles of clothes. Just like like he, he's he's a complete wreck. <laughs> and uh, I think even uh, now I I could be wrong. But um, like in my perception, but it seemed to me like when he and Debbie Harry were and uh, Professor Oblivion were all in the um, the talk show, it seemed like like it, it seemed kind of um, uh, I'm trying to decide how to word it, like almost you kind of discombobulating, like where they they yeah. changed like the the positions. Mm-hmm. Of them and oh, so that was disorienting. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I, I I get tired and I can't word, so <laughs> I can't word good. <laughs> well, I just like how they set it up that he did not give two shits about Doctor Oblivion's being there. He no. was just like, this lady doesn't like me. She finds me repulsive. I'm going to flirt with her. I have and an he starts, erection. Like, playing with her dress. <laughs> well, I was yeah. like, I would like to take you out to dinner later on. <laughs> Professor Brian Oblivion's giving this great like little monologue and it, you can hear them in the back. Like, yeah. So you uh you want to do something tonight? You want to go on? You want to like, so so on? is this I happening think, or what? <laughs> I think that's kind of another essential ingredient of this kind of movie though. It's like it's like it's like it's it's not like an EC horror thing where everything's blatant, but you don't you don't have like this lily white everyman main character. You have a guy who's a little bit of a shit. Yeah, and well, so yeah, like, I mean, like, so, he, so to... the experience is like halfway invited, you know. Yeah, well, he's running what used to be something that we used to have on cable back then, just kind of a schlock yeah. entertainment. It was just a lot of you couldn't have pornography on your satellite stations, but you had basically like softcore stuff going on, it's like people yeah. trying to have shock entertainment. Yeah, it's like something we learned having um, access to our satellite growing up. There were times where you would have reporters caught on air with what people call now hot micing. But it's like you would hear them occasionally cuss and stuff like that and stuff that you didn't <laughs> even pick up on TV. But it's like, this is live. This is new entertainment for you assholes. And it just say again, things like plays. fire fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like when he's, uh, he, when he's talking in the beginning, uh, James Wood, to the uh, Japanese porn distributor guy. Yeah. And he's Damn like, right. yeah, this looks okay. We'll take some of this. But then he goes and watches what the old lady finger bang shows him. He's like, what's this bullshit? <laughs> it's like, this, like, is, this is too well nice. Porn. <laughs> and but speaking of which. Stick. Nah, fuck you. <laughs> speaking of what? The guy who, um, who had that briefcase full of the, the porn. Yes, yeah. Um, green tapes, yeah. Yeah, it's, and I'm going to, I'm probably going to butcher the hell out of this, but uh, David but- Subauchi. Mm-hmm. Um, he was, he was kind of barely in the movie at all, but, um, anyway, back in, uh, rah, 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 I want to say 95, um, he actually, uh, oh, excuse me, um, August of 96, I have it here in my notes. Uh, he was appointed as the minister of oh, consumer and commercial relations in the, uh, government of our Ontario. Well, but it's, it's um, perfect. It's just perfect. <laughs> apparently, his um his opposition used this movie to um like the clip with him in it to use against him. Oh, you think you're so squeaky clean, eh? Well, you were in Videodrome, and that you, there's nothing you can do to get rid of that. <laughs> like I, I don't hang your head. In shame. <laughs> it worked in the OJ trial. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm really sorry, but uh, <laughs> you're a porn dealer. Your Honor, DNA is a junk science. That ain't a real science. No, my client here gets his footballs for a living. He doesn't drop knives. What can I say? Uh, so uh, 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 what's uh, what's 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 uh, what's Amy doing right now? Oh, she, we should just cut now. I think. Amy, Amy, what happened? What did you do? 
Amy, this is serious. Damn it. Where is it, Amy? Where is my money? Where indeed? Uh So, Videodrome happened on February 4th of 1983. And uh, this this movie, uh, unlike Scanners, it did not make a lot of money. It did not get a bunch of shitty sequels directed by Christian Dugway. At the time, uh, people weren't paying to see it. Um, it cost the $5.9 million, which was not a tiny budget at the time. And it was the biggest budget that Cronenberg had ever worked for. And it only raked in the $2.1 million. Um, really? Because on the opening weekend... Uh, everybody was paying to see, so, uh, Video Drum opened at number eight. Uh, people were still paying to see Tootsie, which was number one, even though it was in its eighth week. Um, the, uh, 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 number two was The Entity in its first week. So, uh, this, this is, uh, this is a little, uh, a little fucking postmortem of, uh, of, uh, movie-going audiences. They'd rather see Barbara Hershey get raped by a ghost than watch, uh, this hey, David Cronenberg classic. I mean, hey, who wouldn't? That was <laughs> worth it. <laughs> 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 wait, when do we get to see Ron man, Silver get raped by a ghost? Me, like little children. You're uh, talking about art, Adrian. That's right. <laughs> I'll never no understand. No art. <laughs> Number three was 48 Hours in its ninth week. Uh, number four was Gandhi in its ninth week. Uh, the, the, the number five was The Verdict in its ninth week. It, it is a classic. Uh, da, 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 number six was Without a Trace, also in its first week, as it wasn't doing that well. Number seven was Sophie's Choice in its ninth week. And mm. today three was quite a time for the movies, as you can see. Yeah. Um, after that, you get The Dark Crystal. And then you get E.T., yes. which was on its 35th week. They should have pulled that shit by now. Fuck you, Spielberg. Uh... No, I mean, to be fair, Gandhi did beat him out for Best Picture. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's fine, you know. And then, and then Spielberg's like, how come I can't get a Best Picture Oscar? I don't understand. I'm making these movies about all this stuff. And somebody's like, you didn't. using all these directors in my movies, boy. Yeah. <laughs> and and then they're like why don't you make a movie that they give oscars to what do you mean old man i mean make something about that holocaust everybody likes so much and spielberg's like that's it thank you old man da, 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 da. then and he wrote a bike he gave us holocaust ya <laughs> <laughs> it'll holocaust ya uh, <laughs> uh, <Got it. laughs> later retitled kingdom of the crystal skull <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 we video rama aren't really into apologizing uh, what happened did you did you did you get a nosebleed there it's the dog again <laughs> oh i no yeah i was gonna say if she was bleeding it's because i was thinking of scanner cops really hard and I was sending those signals <laughs> to Linda. Oh, I never even got into Scanner Cop sequels. I just saw the Christian Dugway Scanners 2 and Scanners 3. And, oh. uh, and uh, Christian Dugway, director of The Art of War and, and, uh, and fucking Livewire with Pierce Brosnan. If you've never seen Livewire with Pierce Brosnan, it is the most idiotic, like, mentally disabled action movie of the 1990s. Think of That's all the worst point. 1990s action tropes and put them into one movie and you get live wire. Well, what about Hudson Hawk? <laughs> Hudson, Hudson Hawk actually uh, live. Okay. Hudson, Hudson Hawk is stupid as it is. And as terrible as it is, has the advantage of being somewhat self-aware live wire. doesn't have that. Yeah. Like they really honestly thought they were doing what they were doing. It's about water that makes people explode. <laughs> oh, exploding rectums. Hey, rectum. sounds good to me. Rectum of love. Which I do I have to love about this movie. When the uh, grenade hand goes off, it didn't just obliterate him, it took out a fucking wall. <laughs> yes, Mommy, he, like, he like, laid it out of there. <laughs> yeah, that wall <laughs> just, just yeeted. It was like gone. <laughs> that was so fucking great. Oh. Yeah, it wasn't even like chunks. It was just like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It just blew him the fuck up. Yeah. Great example, by the way, of the jump cut back there, too. Like, the like movies back then had a shitload more jump cuts. They just do them all the time to accomplish special effects. If you watch yeah. For Your Eyes Only, there's like 30 jump cuts in that movie. 
Which praise be to Rick Baker for his effects in this one. Yeah, no, great fucking stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it, it really is like everything coming together. I liked the, um, I mean, it, they looked awkward, but I mean, it's, you know, product of the time. Uh, it's like 1983, but um, I did enjoy the um, the chest, stomach, vagina scenes. All and like the scene where he's got his hand stuck in his stomach vagina. Yeah. Well, I like the part where Barry Convex first puts the tape in him, and after he pulls his hand out, he shakes it off. You know, like, yeah. ugh, ugh, gut stuff. <laughs> well, <laughs> Kill your partners, Max. Give us channel 83. That was a question actually I had about this. I tried getting, like, the first time I watched it, it's like, eh, what the fuck is this? But then the subsequent viewings, I've always wondered, were like, what was the deal with the glasses? I think I think the, that I think that's just sort of thematically combined in there in that well, in that yeah. it's a glasses mogul which seeks to alter people's perception. Well, well, yeah, because that's think... the thing that got me is he kept talking about what a piece of hardware it was, and he's talking kind of almost in terms of like television for your lives. Yeah, well, and we don't know if, um... if maybe Convex is also doing a thing with the glasses, or if it's that's just a coincidental yeah. because it's funny. Because Cronenberg also is very humorous throughout. Well, I um, mean, of course, his name is convex and like like the lens yeah. and yeah. um but also in the beginning uh professor brian oblivion says something about the uh media being the the eye or reaching or being seen through the was it the third the eye? television screen is um, the retina of the mind's eye there you go. Yeah. so it, it, there's a lot of um, references to eyes and yeah yeah, I know, and he's and he's he's giving the Medici quotes at the at the presentation yeah. where they have the dancers yeah. and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm carving a statue. <laughs> the, the 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 gore when when he gets shot and comes apart is awesome. like one of the best fucking things. Yeah. Like that's that's Cronenberg for you. Like you're never gonna not know you're watching a Cronenberg movie because nobody does gore like Cronenberg. Uh, I remember that because ever since seeing it, I still do this. Every time after they leave the hall and James Woods is running away from the scene, I love laughing my ass off that you still hear him dying on stage. Yeah, because he's because the, the microphone right next to the box. <laughs> no, yeah, he's he's just the microphone. <laughs> says, Death to video drum, long live the new flesh, mic drop, and then and then he's <laughs> yeah. being ripped to shreds and it's being broadcast over the fucking speaker. <laughs> yes. Like, his guts are squirming and escaping his ruptured body. <laughs> Meanwhile, his brain's creeping out and his tongue's sticking out. It's, it's fucking pretty fantastic. Oh my god! Like, so, it's no, how it's I so go. <laughs> my organs escaping my body. Yeah. One thing I I love about this movie is that I mean, it you know I was thinking. You know, people call him like the the father of um, of body horror, and I started thinking, yeah, but is it really horror? But then I, I, I've been kind of oh. going back and forth. But then I was thinking, well, if you can put yourself in the um, in Rin's shoes, then it's like, yeah, I mean, if I was just itching my stomach, and then I've got a fucking big gaping stomach vagina. And my hand is getting stuck there. My my fucking gun is there. Then yeah, I'd be freaking out. I'd be fucking horrified. Well, remember, like real life is body horror anyway, from puberty yeah, onwards. Because it's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Everything changed. There's hair, and I smell now. You know. Um, and then as you get older, it's like, <laughs> what the fuck with my skin? What's with these stretch marks? Like, Which why do I have regions? hair in my ears? Welcome yeah, to your thirties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, yeah for yeah, all of much. our listeners, viewers, whatever, who are under the age of thirty, sorry, boo boo. Sorry, <laughs> well, it fucking lasts. I swear to fuck. Yeah, wait till you get boils, motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Enjoy are being gonna young, get, pretty, and being able to hold your liquor. You're gonna get creepy, creepy bumps, rashes. Um, your Some metabolism's going to go any day now, guys. And space eels. you're going to get, like, hair in weird places that you never did before. Um, kind of like puberty, but then you're going to be like, is that right? Am I supposed <laughs> to have uh, hair yeah. in my eyes? Um, 
<laughs> one day you'll have a forehead like Christina Ricci. Yeah. And there's a certain quote from Kindergarten Cop that you're going to find yourself thinking of quite a bit, and it'll be wishful thinking. Yes. Yeah. And everything, everything, you're going to be like, is this cancer? Yeah. Oh, my God, this is the big don't, one. Don't Google it. <laughs> Just don't Google it, because you know what you're going to say. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. yeah. So, so uh, enjoy that. Uh, don't You can't say that it. Uh, nobody warned you. Um, yeah. You're welcome. Oh, and well, if you're a dude, your balls are gonna start to, to sag. Buddy. And if you're a woman, your tits are gonna sag. So you got mm. that going for you. Get yourself what? a good. That's wall. the best part. That's just genitals getting bigger. <laughs> so you were <laughs> saying, Andrew? <laughs> Look at these fucking things twirling them like a flapper's pearls. Like I'm breast for days. <laughs> you're talking about the good part here. <laughs> You don't need ta- booby tassels anymore. Your boobs are the tassels. Uh, oh, it's a little not cold to get out. taboo, but <laughs> we look, can we that. get back to the movie? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Linda didn't know shit about this one. That's right. Yeah. Um, although uh, apparently uh, one of the inspirations for this was uh, was uh, came about uh, when Cronenberg was in the early seventies. He would stay up late and he'd catch uh, American television signals coming up from Buffalo. And he was always he was always half scared that he'd see something he wasn't supposed to. Like, oh, this is this is some of that American broadcasting. Oh, it's going to be so taboo. Uh, He's naughty. (laughs) Yeah. So so he had like versions of the script that he that he would write before then about like about unscrupulous TV coming in on mysterious airwaves. See in Pittsburgh. And I'm sorry, I have to um, correct what I said before. Um, David um, Sabochi was actually in 95. I he was elected. Sabucci. That guy? Yeah. Um, <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he was originally elected in 95 as um, the, uh, um, let's see, the, uh, sorry, my notes. Uh, he was named to premier uh, Mike Harris's cabinet as minister for community and social services. So, you think by '95, if, if somebody accused you of being a pornographer, people would just cheer. Like the '90s was so obscenely sex positive. You know, you know what? Good for him. <laughs> Did he say I accused my parents? <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy? in your work um by the way this is this was james wood stardom uh taking off here as well because this is uh after his appearance in eyewitness with william hurt and sigourney weaver and before movies like the boost uh by harold becker and true believer yeah but going back to something linda said earlier about this being horror this was really It's one of the exceptions I make to where this is artistic horror because David Cronenberg horror is always good stuff because it's not technically horror. It can be gross, but it's his take on horror, which I like. He even takes the grossness to his dramas. It's wonderful. Yeah. And it's It's like like about making you uncomfortable and kind of um, discombobulated. I mean, yeah, he does kind of do that because I felt a little uncomfortable when I had to see uh, Vigo Mortensen's balls like right in my face in his later work. Yeah, I mean, later Cronenberg. Yeah. Um, is yeah. it tr- like Cronenberg didn't quite have the all at once like fall apart like Martin Scorsese did, where it's just like you know people really enjoy my movies. I think I'm going to change that. Um, yeah, but, it was also uh, a good period because we had in this time period in the '80s. You had big name stars, so like, yeah, oh, horror, yeah, fuck it, I'll do it. Why not? Yeah, they weren't being and, too and, uh, pretentious. And Woods about was it. a Cronenberg fan too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and uh, actually, uh, I, I I looked it up. I didn't realize that uh, Deborah Harry had actually done uh, quite a few movies. Um, she'd actually started doing movies in '75 with uh, with Deadly oh. Hero. Yeah. So like this was there was actually nothing new to her, but like it was I think it was her first like major film role like like everything before that had been small. Yeah. Playing um, a bottom. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know too much. I think I found some her. people that may disagree with our love of this film. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, that's a bad one. 
<laughs> um, um, one of the worst films ever made. <laughs> Apparently, this movie was made before the film director learned about the importance of good musical director. The soundtrack is simply horrible and totally interferes with the movie. Academy the Award act- winner Howard Shore. The action is disjunctive. <laughs> and therefore needs the glue of an organized musical theme to link everything together. <laughs> the, the action wonders. The action <laughs> wonders. The music wonders. I was relieved when the movie ended. This film could have been a classic. Instead, it's a sea hack job. P.S. If you're a James Wood fan, don't bother. His talent is completely wasted in this piece of trash. So he said a sea hack, and I thought like sea hag, and I was oh. like, I don't get it. What? No, but his thesis is is that is that any movie is better if you just slap a shitty Hans Zimmer score on it. I yeah. need to know what to be feeling. You need uh, to bring in the violins now. Now you see when when the native comes down those steps in King Kong, and there's a little beat every time his feet hit one of those steps. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> It's lyrical. It's like I'm there. That's the importance of music in a movie. It's the opera of life. Yeah. Speaking (laughs) of. Oh, no. So sorry I wasted my time with this. Would rather have spent $3 on a parking meter. This movie looks like it was written, directed, and produced by a band of 12-year-old stoner kids. Everything in this movie was half-baked, and its release year is no excuse for the ridiculously bad effects. What? I have never been compelled to write a review, but I was shocked that something so bad had received so many glowing reviews. This movie left me with the sensation of having watched a meth addict try to convince me that he was making a playing card disappear by tossing it over my head. I hope this review will save others a precious 1.5 hours. Better to take a nap. Better to watch an unplugged TV, for that matter. Was this a handwritten letter on, like, a uh, personal stationery? That Magazine was, like, letters. Yeah. Honestly, the unplugged TV would her play her well into the film. <laughs> <laughs> I have never... Ever. <laughs> so Dear bad. sir or madam editor, I was very <laughs> displeased. <laughs> you should be somebody, somebody who wrote this decided they were going to be a little bit of a comedian. So I will. I like comedy. <laughs> I, because we have a little bit of a comedian with us, I believe I'm going to let Linda read this review. God damn it. <laughs> Cold reads. That's always cool. Well. I thought you were talking yeah. about your penis. <laughs> a little bit of a comedian. Tiny <laughs> wink. Oh, God damn it. In the event of an emergency when watching this film, your empty popcorn bucket makes a useful vomitory aid. Your couch cushion can be used as a flotation device when the bucket overflows to drift yourself out of the living room and as far away from the tally as you can possibly get. You'll be sick to your stomach for sure knowing you've wasted good money on bile such as this. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I would like to tie this guy up and show him full cheese zombie. Right? Yeah, it's like it's like you ain't seen nothing yet, loser. Yeah, yeah. Oh. We we lived through that. <laughs> but to be fair, he was British, so yeah. this was not oh oh that's oh so he's, he's a Thatcher Brit, right? It's like I, was, I need the government to protect me from these video nasties. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With all the upset stomach talk, it it's made me think about okay, um, listeners, um, if you can give us the hookup. I really, really, really want to interview the guy from the Pepto commercials who does the diarrhea part. Yeah. <laughs> if you know that guy, please <laughs> give us the hookup. I want to interview him. And I'm, I'm being serious. I want to interview that dude. <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> 
Oy, oy, oy. Were there any more reviews? Oh, there were lots, but they were very short. And most okay. of them were about people not being happy with the movie, just saying, yuck, disgusting, waste of time. How is this a classic? <laughs> oh, all, the, all those things that we were just talking about with glowing praise, they're all like, ew. Yes. Ew. Yeah. Why was the score done by Henry Mancini? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there was one of you that said, I am giving this a one star as I did not purchase this film. So I mean that was very that was very pungent. God damn it. <laughs> so bad I didn't even buy it, you guys. Yeah, so. that one woke David Cronenberg from his restful sleep. <laughs> I Ow, hate that shit. That's... Like you see that on on Shutter all the time too. Like I have not seen this movie and I have no desire to. One star. <laughs> it's like, go so fuck like, yourself. Just wait, just review like, shit that you ain't seen. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, um, uh, uh, Mocking Jay Part Two is the worst movie ever. I can't prove that it is or isn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, I'm not going to watch it, but, you know, I'm also not going to write a review because I didn't fucking watch it. You also can't uh, prove or disprove the fact that the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants Part 2 is the greatest film ever. Or Mamma Mia Part 2, right. (laughs) I'll never really know. They never talk about how which one got a yeast infection started for the whole group sharing that one pair of unwashed pants. But... (laughs) Someone you know, decided to go commando. And bl- blurgent, detergent, you know. <laughs> whatever uh, the hell that series of, is. Called. Yeah. Um, I did find one discussion point which we can talk about, which we've already kind of talked about. Um, I did not get to confer with my colleagues. Oh. But uh y'all got some colleagues. Yeah. I, I just need a little drink or two again. Hmm. For the record, Buffalo Trace tastes like Buffalo ass. What the hell is that? Adrian, was that a jug oh. of your piss? <laughs> I mean, what, you don't have a piss jug by your computer? I mean, at your Not workstation? Sponsored, but, uh. So, we live in a time where media is consumed in mass. To a point, it almost causes sensory overload. There's just way too much shit out there. The internet, social media, they've all become just like literal extensions of ourselves, which is kind of creepy when you think about it, because it's like if you decide to get high in one night and then think about how you put yourself out there online, you really do have like a visual, like a digital doppelganger of yourself online. Mm -hmm. It's kind of creepy, and it makes it feel like even when we're dead, we're literally going to be video drone very soon because we're going to have, instead of video cassettes, we're going to have hard drives of ourselves online. And that kind of creeps me out. But that was also a sober thought I had. So, also, I mean, it, you know, I, I kind of creep myself out thinking about it. Like, um, you know, when we were growing up, uh, it wasn't so much of a thing, but um, like in the, I guess, uh, late nineties, early two thousands. Um, like we started really having, um, social media, I guess more like in the two thousands, but then, uh, Mm -hmm. there is a record of the embarrassing shit that we did. And we thought and shared when we were younger. Not nearly as bad as kids today. There are kids Mm -hmm. killing themselves because of shit we used to do in high school and elementary that nobody has any record of except our mental scarring. Back in our day, (laughs) we'd just go to a school shooting. We wouldn't live stream the shit. Come on. I still remember that too because Columbine happened when we were in uh, high school. And it's like I remember me and my generation joking about how these guys were amateurs because nobody was taking time to aim and they just didn't mean what they were doing because if they did, they would have taken aim at their shots instead of just randomly firing out. But it's like, now you say that, and your ass gets put on a fucking list in a high school. Well, but yeah, there was oh. a lot of shit that you could still say back oh, in the yeah. house, by the way. Like, True now, story. everybody's so close to the vest. Um, Donnie, uh, remember there was, I'm, I'm not going to say his name, but there was that kind of creepy guy that he nobody. My best friend, the Asian guy. Um, There was, I think it, it might have. No, I think you used to hang out with him, but then, like, yeah. we started hanging out with him, and then you were like, why are you hanging out with him? He's, like, he's fucked up, dude. Well, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, well, he would compliment she, you on your smell. Uh, no, he actually found it funny when people didn't like him because he would just do this Beavis voice of, if you pay me 50 cents, I'll go away. <laughs> it's like he would expect you to do that. And he yeah, was like, we liked him like at, at first and he was really cool and he did some like really cool poetry, but um, he, he ended up stalking one of my friends, like full blown hiding in the bushes stalking. Yeah. yeah. Not just like a, <laughs> I'm stalking you type of thing. No, he was yeah. really fucking stalking her. Yeah. And then, um, and I heard yeah. that after we moved, um, in the graduation class that I was supposed to be in, he was carted off by the government because he not only did he create like an elaborate plan for bombing the graduation yeah. and where he was going to place the bombs, where, how he was going to make the bombs, how many yep. and, um, all of that. But he then gave these plans to our AP lit teacher. Yeah. <laughs> like, so. yeah he expected an A plus. He was really surprised you, when they were motherfucker there. was carted off. No, I don't give a fuck saying his name because he changed it. He changed it in school. Oh. His original name was Robert Chan. And then he decided to change it because he was saying that his parents weren't his parents and that he had another name he was going to use instead. But yeah, he got mm. carted off because he had all the stuff to do this and he kept telling everyone he was going to explode the graduation. And yeah. it's like, all right, dude, whatever the fuck, we don't care. But the only thing he had is a skill that actually people enjoyed about him was he was somewhere deep on the spectrum because this guy memorized by heart every Beatles song. And you could just say two words and he would tell you what song it was from. They are only I mean, two minutes long, you know. Yeah. Well, at but, first, like, he was cool and, like, we liked hanging out with him. And then we realized that the creepy thing, the creepiness yeah. wasn't a joke. And <laughs> we're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, you should have appreciated that you got the genuine article. But I don't know. Just, I remember back no. in school, everybody had, like, a printout of the anarchist cookbook that they'd pass around. Yeah, and be like, hey, guys, look, you can make too. thermite and shit. And be like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, you could, but why but bother? Like, that was the whole, oh, my God, you're not supposed to have this. But if you went over to fucking Barnes & Noble or you went into Tower Records, oh, my God, there's the book, the forbidden book. Yeah, which is just out there. Yeah, it was just really overblown, kind of like the whole I mean, face of the death thing. But. And stuff like that would kind of go along around big college computers on servers in the 70s, yeah. stuff like the poor man's James Bond and shit like that. You know, yeah. like, you can make an atomic bomb, it's like, joke's on you, you can't get that much uh, plutonium. But, I mean, <laughs> this, this is an entirely off-topic discussion, because even going back into things like that and the early days of the internet where we were at, it's just shittily creepy to think about how insecure things were back then because like talking yeah. to people online i used to have lots of long distance phone calls conversations that cost our parents a lot with people yeah, that as too. soon as you talk to for like an hour like hey here's my phone number go ahead and give me a call <laughs> <laughs> or, hey, why don't you send me mail? Here's my address. Well, and you know, like, it okay. was literally a more innocent time. You know, yeah. there were fewer it's people like, on yeah, there. It was more of a fun thing now. for, for us I adults. I 16, and there was like a 30-something-year-old guy that wanted me to move to okay. um, mother his child. Yeah. <laughs> and you did that, and it all worked out fine. <laughs> It worked out fantastically. <laughs> That's right. You know, then I just then I mothered up his kid, and now I'm here. <sighs> oh, sometimes I miss little Bobby, but what are you gonna do? Mama's you gotta guys, live. You guys man. are just reminding me of the to catch a predator shit I've been I've been watching lately, and the fact that somebody on DeviantArt wanted wanted to do a role play, and I'm like I'm like, well, how old are you? And he's like, well, 15. I'm like, fuck you, I'm not doing that. He's like, why? Come on. I'm like I'm like. He's like, no, 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 come on. Come on, it'll be fun. Let's do a sexual role play. I'm like, no, fuck off. <laughs> he's like, he's like, you dirty rule follower. Come over to my house. I am <laughs> And he would just like try to initiate it in comments. It's like it's like it's like, you know, Snuggles up too. It's like the weak comment, you know. Oh. Internet. <laughs> But I but yeah, think, no, like um, public uh, public life is the only life now, like Facebook and all yeah. that shit, like people sharing and resharing shit, taking videos of themselves, dropping a deuce. Well, and also people judging you if you're not posting your beliefs, like even people getting the death threats that were getting death threats if they weren't using pronouns to show that they support things like that and the LGBTQ community. 
and just things like that. Like, so you got to a point with between that cancel culture, anything where you don't approve of, you feel you have the power now to say you no longer exist in my world. And the fact that they put so much into this, that big companies are so afraid that they'll just immediately back off or say, fuck it, we'll do whatever you want. Just don't kill us. Don't hate us. That that's the power people have now. And they shouldn't have because fuck people. Yeah. But well, going, I feel like like I, I think it was it was McLuhan who actually um, apparently like he coined the phrase uh, "global village." Yeah, that or something was, like yeah, that. Yeah, and yeah, we again live in a village. You know? Yeah, because the the media kind of ties us together. But I feel like the internet is more so in that yeah in that uh, regard. Like I mean, we're talking to people from different countries. We're yeah. you know and I, I feel like we, it, on the good hand of the internet, the pro side, I mean, we're more interconnected and we can yeah. have more conversations. Um, but at the same time, <sighs> I feel like it's, it's like, it, like in Videodrome, they're kind of saying that um, oh. in one aspect that like, We've seen, like, with television and cable, we've seen some, like, real shit. <laughs> and so you start to become desensitized to it. Whereas, well, like, with the internet, like, you have any fucking kind of porn you want to see, it's well, there. Well, there was a thing raised in, in Videodrome that was, not, that was not vague, that was not abstract, um, that has also, we've seen play out very, very, uh, very, very uh, tangibly. Uh, in recent years, is that is that is that the the the, the evils come in where you see people doing conscious abuses of and, con- and control of the medium, you know, mm-hmm. like like people like convicts, you know, who want to you know like con- control narratives and shit like that, and like and subtly manipulate, you know, yeah, or not so subtly manipulate, you know, and you, you and you look at the fact that um, there's no such thing as a local news station anymore. Oh, um, yeah. and, uh, there's, there's, uh, and, and, uh, it's very rare to have a local radio station, even though a lot of people who have abandoned the radio, uh, format, it's still there. And almost all of it is owned by that queer channel media, iHeart radio shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so wh- whatever, true. whatever bent they want to take, like you, you, uh, if you, you know, if you're uh, fuck uh, back to print media, which still exists, oddly enough, you know, like if you're in line at the grocery store and you see all the tabloids, you notice they all sort of kind of have the same bent and the only certain That's, people are yeah. dying of certain diseases, certain people who disagree with the people who own the me, the, the publication. Yeah. 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 And, but I feel like it's also, um, with mass media and now with the internet, we get, more and more and more and everything's so readily available right there. And um, I feel like it was kind of talking about, uh, like I was saying earlier, the becoming desensitized to these themes. And then next thing you know, you need something harder. <laughs> like with uh, with them talking about the, the porn being too soft or too, too tacky, whatever. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, well, let's face it, when something. you jerk off, you don't want to see a thing about consensual <laughs> sex. Come on. Yeah, but that's also a thing of its time. People too, who aren't family members. People, that's why people aren't as affected by the movie now as they were back then. Because back then, even BDSM was something that was just so taboo that it freaked people out. Even the whole well, also, burning um, skin with fucking cigarettes thing, too, yeah. and the cutting. But it's like, yeah, seeing that shit now, we're just so used to it, nobody gives a shit. Yeah. Same right, same right, shooting. right after the seventies, you know, the like the entire West basically clenched and became a lot more conservative. It happened yeah. in England, the United States, Australia, probably Canada too. I haven't actually looked into it. Sorry, sorry, Canadian friends. Uh, but you know, like like the the Reagan Thatcher type time, you know, all of a sudden you get you get people putting this happy face on everything, and it was morning in America, and so the, the you get a a movie and television backlash against that, and this is part of that. Yeah, but again, it's like the the main thing I think they touched on in the film, at least, was just how we handle, especially with James Wood's character being so predominant about it, sex and violence. Yeah. Because he didn't want to admit that the guy was right, that he's like, oh, we need a little BDSM to get your motor going, to get the hallucinations going. He's like, yeah, no, that's not true at all. Fuck you. 
I'm not. I, I'm not weird. Come on, I'm not, not into that. Today, it's like, <laughs> oh my god, you repaired my computer. You you looked at my browsing history. How how dare you? I I'm gonna fucking sue you. And my my um my assistant comes in and he uses my computer sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's like my fucking sister. I uh, midget haven't porn. used that email yeah, in years. Fucking no, bitch. Um, oh, how dare you, sir? This is not my porn. You know, I I turned around like three times before coming here, and I was just gonna come to warn her about guys like me. <laughs> but it's like you have that but then you on the other side of the spectrum you have which no matter what side of it you fall you fall on you have people feeding you stories they want you to hear in yep. the news as well Damn. as documentaries things used to be very objective where that's what you're supposed to do with documentaries is take yeah. an objective approach it was at least attempted thought. at one point yeah. yeah at one point but then everyone's like the i want to be a fucking michael moore dipshit so then you have people Michael Moore, whose documentaries were largely changing their lives entirely based on what a documentary tells them, with no regard to whether or not there's things to back up these claims or if the claims are just actual, well, actual bullshit. What, what, what you're touching on is the real pe- uh, issue about media in general and people yeah. these days and about Facebook and all that is that people do not think critically. People look for oh. confirmation bias and they like it. Right. And, well, and, and that's and something I really hated with politics too is that you oh. had this whole play in with all these different media platforms mm-hmm. feeding you the person that they were backing they weren't yeah, telling yeah they backing and they people, weren't giving enough airtime to like the people that they didn't like but it's like yeah. they were doing that they were blocking other people both sides do it and it's just something that people are eventually getting fed up with that and people are starting to act out more violently and that yeah. kind of plays in again with the themes and like i was trying to get across to finishing the rest of the discussion point it's between media between the internet between video games and violence and everything we have access to not to mention reality shows which again that movie video drum really really fucking touched on just in a very different way but not so much different today we're pretty fucking close to living in a video drum world it's still that's why i kind of feel this movie is a very relevant thing for today but it's also just kind of almost self prophesying or yeah. self prophesying. Yeah. And I mean, Deborah Harry, or Debbie Harry, like her character keeps saying that, like, I I want to be a contestant on this. And I'm like, oh, she said she was I made don't for that show. I think <laughs> they're contestants. And so she like, was. I don't think it's a game show. <laughs> it's man. something that initially he thinks they're political prisoners in a third world country, by the I way. I don't so think it, they're getting prizes. He's like, um, it ain't exactly sex. And she's like, well, I'll be, ju- I'll be the judge of that, you know? Yeah. But the, to touch on like what you were talking about, um, I mean, Videodrome literally shows these people controlling Ren by directly feeding him this media yeah. and con- controlling him in his mind and what he sees, what he perceives through media. Well, it's kind of interesting because when you look at things like that and you also look at how younger people today act, mm-hmm. it's portrayed like heroin. And that's why James Wood wasn't freaking out as much as he could have been about a lot of things because as soon as he started to have that moment of what the fuck is going on and why would you do this to me that's when they start introducing to him oh hey here's another take and it's like he just gets that look in his eyes and they just glaze over and he's like fuck yeah put that in my stomach vagina <laughs> and it's the same way how people yeah. freak out when they have no internet um. but they'll still hold their phone for comfort and just try repeatedly oh. to look at things they can't and then they'll go, oh, my God, I wonder what this is. Oh, fuck, I can't look it up on my phone. Like, well, how do you spell that? Oh, fuck, I can't look that up either. What do you remember uh, 10 do? years ago where sometimes you'd forget your phone and you'd shrug and you'd keep going? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And but now you forget your phone and it's like, I've got to go back home. I've got to go back home. Fuck. That's you. You're not there without it. How important he was. So he would call his own pager to make sure it was working. Who? Brian. Oh, they're like, I gotta Professor call my Brian page. I'm a very important businessman. I remember. <laughs> oh, a pager. That means he's a pimp or a drug dealer. Stay yeah. away from like, I want you to have this pager so I always know where you are at all times. You can get to a pay phone. Do you remember pay phones? <laughs> you gotta go use that to let me know where the fuck you are. Sure you gotta you got answer. enough quarters in your pocket. It's like, hey, oh, you're gonna go out again key. with your friends and you're gonna stay out till 10, 11 at night? No, you're gonna take a pager with you and you're gonna call me to let me know where you are. Make sure you take enough that extra quarters, though. 
Casey. I know. That's why I said that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Your mom literally oh. got me a pager when I was like, what, 15? If the 13? call gets cut What's off, that? make sure to talk to the operator, get your change. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to accept the charges. Just start talking to me as soon as they start connecting us, okay? Just tell me what it is and then you call me back. You need to call one eight hundred deniability. Yeah. One eight hundred call ATT. Get your money back at the end of the call, okay? <laughs> Where star six nine had a totally different meaning. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, Did your father fight in Korea too? Anymore. <laughs> Did you have a script doctor, as you said? What? I didn't hear huh? the song. <laughs> my god adrian okay so um this is this is almost an irreplaceable film right like it's it's almost impossible to imagine anybody else doing it um you know like very few things directly compare although poltergeist is like the family friendly version <laughs> with 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 the uh, ghosts and shit too you know it's mm. just a minor point minor point you know uh, but uh, I, I kind of like to imagine a Ken Russell version of this with Dick Smith special oh, effects, you know, getting John Carigliano <laughs> score going, you know, can you, can you picture it? You know, cause uh, Ken Russell, you know, say what you will about him. His shit was bad shit and you would not forget his movies. Um, I, I imagine in a universe in which Videodrome was sequeled, it would only go the worst possible way. The way that we we wind up continually deserving, i.e., either Christian Dugway or sci-fi original. Although, uh, in all likelihood, what we we probably will get, since they did it with everything else, is they'll turn it into some fucking uh, six-hour binge Bandit series. 3? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smoke just like Smokey and the Bandit Three. Yeah. How <laughs> yeah. <Hal> many <laughs> video You're gonna Bandit, have James little girl. Wood playing Smokey and the Bandit. That's right. And Dom DeLuise. <laughs> As the talking <laughs> stomach vagina. I'm Captain Chaos. Just put the tape in me. <laughs> I got my dick out on the subway because I'm a sex pervert. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Michael Hall in Videodrome, the series. Oh, my God. Did we just make that? <laughs> Did we just well, manifest we that? Sci-fi original show out of 12 monkeys. Nothing's fucking sacred. That's true. What the That's fuck? That's true. Yeah. Why don't you go abuse that Thomas Harris bullshit one more time, you fuckers? Turner and Hooch is now a series, too. On Disney+. Plus. Oh, 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 is the time now? Should they bring back Tequila and Benetti? Belisario, are you listening? You piece <laughs> of shit. I don't think he's still with us, is he? Did he die? Good. Oh. I Anywho. Hate Donald P. Belisario. Don Don? I really couldn't do a script doctors just because it's kind of hard. Well, I mean, but the uh, uh, easiest change? I could come up with is that Max and Dr. Oblivion, they now that they've become one with the new flesh. They decided to open up a VCR repair service, <laughs> and the more I thought about it, the more I just thought, why not just take the movie with uh, Jack Black and Most Deaf, Be Kind, Rewind, and just replace <laughs> them with James Woods and Jack Creeley. And there you go. Oh, just hey. Just it together, Be Kind, Rewind with Tetsuo the Iron Man. <laughs> yes, that's exactly where I was going with that. <laughs> They're just going to turn into one meat and metal machine toward the end. It's going to have a whole you bunch of tape sweated. rewinding. <laughs> Feed him! It's like someone's going to put their hand in the drop box at night, and then all of a sudden it's going to be like, oh my god, my hand, what's going on? <laughs> then they get sucked in there, kind of like the gremlins with the mailbox. It's like the guy's oh. reaching in there, it's like, ah, ah! And then inside you have James Woods going <laughs> of the time I talked this couple into 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 buying a VHS copy of eight millimeter. And then they brought it back like like when not even an hour later and wanted a refund. And I'm like, what's wrong with you people? Like you told us to buy it and it wasn't good. It's like you don't have to do what I say. I'm not your boss, you idiot. I don't know why I was expecting you to say that you talked one couple into pegging. <laughs> Don't no, just try it. Just well, try I am a life coach. So. 
obviously I did that. Video store clerk during the days at night's life coach <laughs> under the bridge. Are, are we doing this right? You got to grab his hips. What are you doing in our home? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You invited the idea. You invited me. It is not I'm my custom idea to go flesh. where I'm not welcome. Yeah. Do you guys want some of this blockbuster popcorn? We got a lot of it. <laughs> we got to use it up. Technically, it's expired. <laughs> 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 and it's afterwards, you keep the bucket to vomit in. Yeah. Don't let my popcorn pop and get in the way of you fucking your husband with a peg. <laughs> don't, don't let that stop it. Now you gotta start off slow. Start off slow. Oh fuck! Breathe. I can hear those kernels. They're gonna start burning. I'll be right back. Oh, that smells horrible. Oh, you know God. that internet video said you could just dump the skittles in and they turn colors, but that turned out to be bullshit. <laughs> it's a little burnt, but I put in some Hershey's Kisses, so you won't be able to tell too much. <laughs> but what have my junior mints, man? What have you done with my junior mints? You're not going to want oh, those back. Um, so much like Donnie. Into a musical? <laughs> you know, I was thinking about it. You always um, are. I know. So I decided to go a different route because much like Donnie, I had an issue um uh, just creating a sequel because it it shouldn't be done, um, and a remake shouldn't be it. done. But <laughs> um, yeah, but here we are. Um, I think either a I would want to see like a day in the life of uh, his assistant Bridie, or the porn distributors in the beginning, um, mm. and see their backstory. Um, I wanted like a huge like MCU like sort of origin story of them. <laughs> and, like find out that these guys are really fucking fascinating and they're like they're vigilantes. That or, sounds like an early Brian De Palma movie right there. The porn seller. So my God, I got the video of her undressing. See, yeah, no. Yeah, different. but how would he shit on uh, the uh, memory of Hitchcock with that? Um, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, it's cock shat on his own memory when he made fucking Topaz. Okay, that's fair. I just um, had an explosion in my brain, but what if you remade this like the musical Little Shop of Horrors? <laughs> but it's W-H-O-R-E-S. Yeah. Uh, for further viewing, watch Demons 2, by the way. Yes, yeah, definitely. Uh, and three. Um, yeah. All I, the different threes. <laughs> I'm going to settle on a reboot with puppets. <laughs> oh, no, my gun is stuck in my tummy. <laughs> Uh-oh, that's not good. <laughs> that's when the video attack. <laughs> Won't you cut me? <laughs> I should be a contestant on this show. <laughs> you guys have seen Cronenberg's Naked Lunch, right? Yes. I remember yeah. running that from Blockbuster. That's, that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's another good companion viewing right there. That's another <laughs> movie that Donnie and I probably saw way too young. <laughs> ah, what's too young to see a, a monstrous Julian Sands like ripping a guy up in oh. giant scorpion form with rape? Yeah. <laughs> rape sees. Like Paper cuts, yeah. Um, also watch Cronenberg's Crash in the NC-17 cut and Existence. Yeah. 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 So. So, but. I think that about covers it. I yeah. suppose this is the part where I say, please, please, please listen, follow, rate, and review Video Rama on Apple Podcasts, especially because it helps other people find us. And if you do, it will earn you a nice shout out here on air and um check out our stuff on youtube if you're not already uh you can see our precious cherubic faces <laughs> um also check out our a patreon bit all the time here um, if you like what you hear please please help support us um buy us some pizza or some some good alcohol um you can support us on uh on pod chaser Excuse me, what am I talking about? On Patreon.com, that's the place. Oh, that's the place you can support us, Patreon, yeah. <laughs> it's Patreon. But our signal can come through under a test pattern. Yeah. It's true. Yes. 
We will give you uh, <laughs> Are we coming from Pennsylvania? From Washington Ooh. State? No. Or a place. <laughs> 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 but you could check that out on patreon.com forward slash video rama pod or um just like i think it's a couple bucks a month you can get buttons you can get stickers uh you can uh at a certain level you can even get uh adrian drawings and at another level you can suggest what theme we cover or a movie that we can cover you can even be a special guest here so please, please, um, please support us. Please, for the love of God, we need. Look at Adrian. Please, mister. <laughs> there are starving Adrians in Washington State. She yeah. asked me to support her, and I say <laughs> no. <laughs> Only you can help. <laughs> and Adrian just was just a couple days ago the birthday boy. He was our precious little birthday boy. Don't ask me which birthday it was. <laughs> he didn't get a cake. Didn't get presents. Got nothing. Because but he can afford it. You know, and masturbation's a gift everyone can enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Uh, uh, <laughs> video drums playing. Fuck yeah. Yeah, and when you do it with your feet up against the wall, so you're kind of like laying your head down on the bed and you're at a tilt, it's a surprise for you at the end. <laughs> no, video rama is just too soft. So There's something too soft. Make sure your wall's it. clean, though, so you can get that suction cup on there. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> so, um, remember, you can find video rama on Twitter at uh, video rama p, the letter p. Uh, you can write to us at videoramapod at gmail.com or you can go to our website, our website, pulling dicks from here and there. <laughs> I don't know why I had to do the pulling dicks dance. Um, you can check out our other, um, our website. It's uh, just still a little fresh. We just put it up uh, not too long ago. It is uh, videoramapod.com or um, those foolish people uh, let us share their website at cageskiss.com. Those um, foolish things. That's my like, says I love you. When we killed them, we took it. Um, check out my other podcast about witches in history and stories of all major. Uh, Bedknobs and Broom Flicks. You can also find us at bedknobsandbroomflicks.com or at cageskiss.com as well. Um, Adrian, what you got going on? Oh, I can be found on the interwebs. Uh, Linda mentioned that I do the artworks. You can find me on deviantart.com under Leo the Fox, L E O T H E F O X, all run together, all one word, all lowercase. And you can find my 3,000 artworks and stories and such that I've been cramming on there. I've been working a lot lately to get them stories updated. So there'll be a shitload of new chapters appearing on there uh, probably by the time this is posted. So you should all check it out. Yeah, baby. And uh, my... Uh, <laughs> Damn, <Matt. laughs> Who you? loves you? Um, and and my, my Patreon is also under Wheel of the Fox. You should give to me the dollars, please. I am requiring them. I'm getting paid less these days. Just saying. And I'm on YouTube under A.A. A. Smith. And, uh, yeah. and Donnie someplace is out there. Yeah. Besides finding Where's Dildo, what are you up to? I'm on the YouTubes under Unreal Goals. You know it's me because it's got a cute little kitty cat looking all majestic and shit. I'm also Unreal Goals on the Twitter. Still rather to be like on the Instagram. And you also find me with the raccoons at the dumpsters behind Arby's because a man's got to eat. <laughs> raccoons will eat horse gotta... sauce. Just see. <laughs> so next week, Donnie will be giving us his recommendation for reality is Fuck the nightmare. Yeah. <gasps> Until then, death to video Rama and long live the new flesh. Hey, long live the I, new flesh. I know we can't say what it is, apparently, because that's a thing. It's a thing. But I think people should try to guess because the movie I'm suggesting was a movie that Cage's Kiss people would have enjoyed if it had worked out that way. 
Right. The only clue is it's a movie where Nicolas Cage was going to be cast as the main hero. Is it Shrek? No. Deborah Harry's character. How is that the nightmare of reality? (laughs) I mean, Shrek is the best thing ever. I knew this girl (sighs) named Nikki. You could say she was. I need to get you in in touch with like Smash Mouth because they have something (laughs) you should hear. (laughs) (sighs) Fuck my life. No, that's my motto. Fuck Donnie's life. 